Hello everybody, I am uh, Vipin Dhote from Faculty of Pharmacy. Today we will be discussing about action potential. Now when we talk about action potential, there is nothing but the electrical impulse which is generated by any cell. Now when we talk about a mammal or any multicellular organism the communication between cell will be always very important aspect of that organism now this communication between cells will be done by this electrical impulse or action potential now when we talk about any excitable cell especially neuronal cell cardiac muscle skeletal muscle endocrine cell these all cells will be generating their own impulse and this impulse will be propagated from one place to the other place that is from one cell to the other cell and when we have this propagation or conduction of this impulse the physiological change will be carried out we understand that drugs also act through this mechanism they act on specific molecular targets the changes which are occurring into that molecular targets will be amplified in the form of physiological change because we take drug from oral route but the action will be carried out into your central nervous system or it could be uh, into your uh, extremities it is only because you are generating that electrical impulse or action potential which is carried out by ionic exchange now i said ionic exchange what is this ionic exchange because we need to know a cell will be made up of various organelles and this cell membrane will be enclosing all these organelles if you consider this as a cell you will be always having cytosol into this particular uh, uh, cell which is maintaining the shape and uh, distributing your various organelles like mitochondria golgi apparatus and your uh, endoplasmic reticulum when we talk about cytosol it will be always having fluid and charged particles like cations and anions now this cations and anions will be ions which will be moving from this plasma membrane we all know that plasma membrane is made up of lipid bilayer and this lipid bilayer is embedded with pores see these pores which are available into this particular plasma membrane could be the first transport mechanism for these ions but this plasma membrane is not always permeable to every charged particle but then when we talk about these charged particles which charged particles are there into our body if we consider the most important ion is sodium ion the other one potassium ion the calcium which is important for actions like contraction and secretion of your glands so if you talk about sodium potassium and calcium these are all charged particles present inside the cell but the concentration will differ you have extracellular spaces extracellular fluid outside this plasma membrane here you will have intracellular fluid which will be having sodium potassium and definitely calcium and when we are talking about the chemical and electrical transport there will be exchange of these ions and this exchange of ions will be carried out by specific transport mechanism and what could be that transport mechanism we need to see these are as channels now what do you mean by channel channel is just like an tube like structure now this tube like structure will be allowing the movement of your charged particles so when we say that it is an ion channel there will be some ion which could be moving in or out of the cell with the help of this particular ion channel and this channel will be always working with energy dependent process so when we exchange these ions there will be change in voltage what is voltage it is a measure of potential difference created by exchange of this particular ions so when we change the potential or voltage your ion channel will be opened or closed and it is called as voltage dependent ion channel 
this potassium ions will be moving from inside to outside the cell because the concentration of potassium ions will be higher inside the cell if we want to know about movement of sodium ion channels you will definitely have one more voltage dependent sodium ion channel here your sodium ions will be moving from outside to inside the cell that is the movement will be always inwardly movement inwardly from outside to inside but beyond that we have few more transporters especially for calcium where we are using ATP we call it as calcium ATP or the calcium pump powered by ATP energy required process beyond that we will be having few more transporters which will be exchanging sodium and potassium we call it as sodium potassium pump or sodium potassium exchanger here you could be having one more where we will be having sodium exchange with calcium so these are transport mechanisms of the cell but by doing this transportation of a cell it will be changing its voltage changing its energy potential and when cell is at equilibrium its potential will be always negative we are talking about neuronal cell the cell could have potential of minus 30 ranging up to minus 80 millivolt depending on the type of cell but if you are discussing about neuronal cell the resting potential that is potential at rest will be always minus 60 cell will not be sitting uh, idle at resting phase it is trying to maintain the internal environment by changing the flow of these ions inside sometimes it will be taking uh, out potassium ions it will be exchanging calcium ions in nutshell they are trying to maintain the ionic balance of these potential now when we say that we need to have energy we need to have stimuli to open up these particular ion channels what is that stimuli the external stimuli we'll take an example of a kid who is pricking this pin onto your uh, uh, hand a kid's force will be little bit lesser you will not feel the pain but if an adult is pricking this pain or poking this particular pain onto your hand or, or onto your body, you will feel severe pain and that seems to be your stimuli. So if you consider this as your uh, chart for understanding, here the cell is at rest. That is the charge will be minus 60. That is the negative potential of your cell it is rest now it will be minus 80 if you go more negative it could be minus 40 if you go positive minus 20 it could be zero here and if you move up it will be plus 20 it could be plus 40 and so on so forth now we said that uh, adult can prick or poke this particular pain to cause you intense sense of uh, uh, generation of that electric, uh, electrical impulse but at this moment when the pen is not pricked your potential seems to be minus 60 the cell is at rest but when you actually say that this electrical impulse is generated this electrical impulse will be generated only after one particular event which we consider it as crossing of this threshold potential i added this word threshold potential what is this threshold potential we said that the kid is pricking the pain you are not feeling the pain but what happens when adult pricks the pain it is this stimuli is crossing this particular threshold potential that is the change in ions is actually creating a voltage which is crossing this minus 50 millivolt so when we say that the threshold potential is crossed there is increase in this particular potential i must 
look at this slope again so it is very sharp now why it is so sharp because we said that sodium ion channels are activated why it is activated because we have provided a stimuli and this stimuli has changed the potential changed the voltage and as we said these are voltage dependent sodium ion channels all sodium most of the sodium ion channels opened up when it crossed this threshold maximum sodium ion channels opened and what was the result the potential changed to positive at this moment here you can see it is at the peak and at, when it is at the peak the currents will change its sign now sodium ion stops movement and potassium ion starts moving outside the cell and this will reflect into change in this uh, cell potential now it starts dropping like anything why it is dropping because we are looking at the movement of potassium ion and the movement is always outwardly this movement is again due to change in the voltage carried out by opening of sodium ion channels and when we said that it is dropping down this particular process is called as repolarization re means it is achieving the resting phase and when sodium ion channels opened up it was depolarization what is the ultimate aim of a cell is to achieve resting phase now how it was achieved initially sodium ion channels opened the potential raised up to maximum potential it is falling down when you have opened up potassium ion channels so it is repolarization but if you keep on pushing out so many so potassium ion channels it will go beyond the resting potential and this particular stage is always called as hyperpolarization there are other electrolytes or ions involved into this stage but at this moment we will simply look at the movement of potassium ions so if you consider that it is going below your resting phase it is hyperpolarization but you can identify that the cell is achieving its resting potential after some time how it has achieved obviously again by exchange of sodium ions uh, exchange of potassium ions sodium ions with the help of these exchanger proteins which we called it as exchanger pumps now we need to know that what happened to this sodium ion channels when we reached up to the peak of this action potential all sodium ion channels which were open became inactive there was no movement of sodium ion channels beyond this particular stage so the movement was stopped the ion channels were inactivated and they will be inactivated till the cell achieves this particular resting potential but we need to identify this particular phase where it opened and here it is again ready to reopen ready to reopen that is not yet open so the space or the period for which your sodium ions are inactivated are is generally considered to be refractory period refractory refractory period now for this period you are having the ability of a cell not to take any more action potential your cell will be having just one action potential your cell will definitely have next action potential only when you have the uh, uh, capacity to reopen your sodium ion channels again so we are simply looking at reopening of sodium ion channels to start new electrical impulse just to summarize what we have seen into this session is that action potential is a electrical stimuli or electrical impulse electrical impulse impulse 
who governed it it was the transport mechanism it was the channels which channels potassium ion channels the voltage dependent potassium was moving outwardly that is from inside to outside the cell the sodium was moving inwardly inwardly obviously exchangers were playing its role again beyond that what we have learned here is that the various stages of your action potential the first one was resting phase where potential was minus 60 millivolt next one very important event was threshold potential threshold potential how much it was it was minus 50 millivolt it was minus 50 mill once it was crossed we achieved depolarization it was just because sodium ions opened up what was the peak of it it was somewhere around 40 to 50 millivolts once it was achieved we are again starting the movement of potassium ion and it was achieved with the help of repolarization again action potential is changing this was just because here sodium ions here potassium ions and the achievement of minus 60 if it gets hyperpolarized if it gets hyperpolarized we will be achieving hyperpolarization it will be achieving beyond this minus 60 that means the cell will be again hyperpolarized if you want to regenerate the impulse again you have to make sure that your sodium ion channels are coming out of that in activated stages so action potential will be always dependent on ionic exchange based on your sodium potassium and the transport mechanism will be always dependent on your ion channels and exchange at this moment it is uh, uh, the understanding of this electrical impulse generated by the cell thank you